Good morning, St. Francis. It is a very rainy and misty Wednesday, September the 22nd, 2021, Wednesday of the 25th week in Ordinary Time. Um, another undisclosed location, this is actually Camp Haynes in King, North Carolina, um, off to the west. Um, here with the eighth grade, um, as it undergoes one of its uh, fantastic traditions, eighth grade of our Franciscan school, um, a team building day uh, to come together as the eighth grade, their final year at the Franciscan school here um, at Camp campaigns uh, where uh, the counselors uh, work uh, to kind of build up their relationships with one another um, and their trust and, um, and, and and their care for each other. Uh, so uh, here all day until 10 o'clock tonight uh, at campaigns. Um, uh, let's see, readings for today. We go back uh, to Ezra and Ezra uh, is um, looking at the situation uh, that uh, Israel has been in uh, that now Cyrus has rectified uh, in sending them back to um, Israel again to rebuild the temple, to rebuild build Jerusalem. Um, uh, Ezra recognizes the fact that the Israelites had done wrong and had uh, uh, gone far afield, far away from uh, what, uh, what, what God had commanded and the life that God had wanted Israel to, le uh, to lead. Uh, but Ezra also uh, speaks in gratitude uh, for God's mercy and God's love and God's compassion uh, that uh, sought to rescue um, uh, Israel from the state of exile that it was in. Um, Important thing with this, again, is that uh, God is always coming to the aid of people, even when they're not asking for it, even when they're not uh, recognizing it, even when they're not expecting it. Um, it is not about pleading God for mercy, pleading God to understand us, pleading God to uh, make our lives better. God is constantly doing that. We have to be aware and awake uh, to realize when and where God is doing that. And that is what Ezra does today, um, is to come to that awareness and come to that awakening of what God has done uh, for Israel and how God continues to walk and and to lead Israel even in its distress. Um, connecting with that is, uh, we go back to Luke's gospel, uh, Jesus sending out the apostles uh, to preach. Um, and again, it's very specific that they are basically just supposed to go without uh, extra clothing, you know, maybe a second, not, not a second pair of sandals, or they could wear a cloak or whatever it is. Um, uh, and then about eating what they uh, provided in the houses that they stay in and, and not being picky about food or lodgings or whatever it is. Um, the It ends with the shaking of the dust if, uh, from, from their sandals if nobody wants to listen to them. But the reality is um, not so much in the shaking of the dust because people don't want to listen to them. It is more the fact uh, that Jesus basically wants these apostles to be um, on the move. Um, that it is not about making sure that you pack all the necessities, making sure that you have your pillow to sleep on, making sure that you have everything to make your life comfy when it comes to proclaiming the gospel. Proclaiming the gospel must be done at all costs and as quickly and as powerfully and as many times as is possible uh, because the world needs to hear this good news. The world needs to hear uh, a sense of itself and understand a sense of itself that our world and our society cannot give alone. Um, to be able to have that kind of um that, that, that kind of mission, uh, that kind of work um, is necessary for all of us as believers to be able to do. Um, there is never the perfect time, the right time to be able to proclaim the gospel. We must do it at all times um, without worrying necessarily about the cost or whether or not we're ready or whether or not we have the things that we need. God provides it all. God provides it uh, because, again, God's love and God's mercy uh, overpowers and overcomes all things that stand um, in, in the way of the gospel taking root in our lives. May the Lord... And with that understanding, may the Lord give you his peace.